I had two lessons today, and the theme of both of those lessons um, was analytical practicing and how analytical practicing gets the student to where they want to be with a particular passage um, instead of redundant, repetitious practicing that doesn't really address a particular problem. And that's where the teacher comes in to, clar to keep clarifying again and again, if you have to, what you need to do in terms of backing up a little bit to go forward. You need to back up to go forward. And even if you think you know a piece very well, there's always going to be little areas of the piece that have finger traps, glitches, um, imbalances between the voices, um, slippery parts, and you have to have some kind of organized way of dealing with those issues. Um, instead of repeating parts of lessons with, that I have with the students, I'm going to pick a particular section that I worked on with the student. Um, the one very um, well-known difficult section of the Beethoven Fertilis is what I call the stormy section. And so the tremolo in the left hand against chords that travel with a melody through them. I think the hardest thing for the student is to hear the melodic line through the chords. So that's a very important thing to revisit. And so today with the student, we revisited this stormy section, as I call it, um, in slower tempo, because as the student was continuing one tempo that he had sort of mastered well through most of the other sections, when he got here, uh, he wasn't able to sustain the smoothness uh, into this particular section. So one of the things we worked on in terms of analyzing the practicing so that we stepwise get it to where it is smoothed out and can be refolded into the tempo he had for the other section is to back up the tempo for this, this section. Um, and the section starts here. And I'm just doing the right hand. And here's where I asked him just to thread the melody on the top voice with the dynamics. actually we mostly worked on through the lesson was just this segment because this was the segment that kind of trapped him. Um, by threading just the top voice, this is what the student should be hearing through the chords. They should not be hearing the heavy weight notes below. They fill in the chord, but the transit through this section, through these particular measures, is the melodic thread on the top. Now the next issue was, after he was able to do that, the issue was now what, and we're not using pedal first, because we, when, you, when you put pedal down and you're revisiting a difficult section, it masks a lot of the problems. You can't really hear clearly what the problems are, so you have to unmask the passage and play it as dryly as you can, but yet, without the pedal, it's dry, but you're still thinking of a horizontal thread and making it beautiful, even without the pedal. So he has this diminished chord, and he needed to right away come in with the C sharp that is leading this section at the beginning. If you have anything else and you wait it toward the E, the G, the B flat, you do not have a singing line at the top. And this is soft because you're going to have to make a crescendo. So. And then the way we do this, and there's no pedal now, so we do some cheating. We use these pivot fingers, four, three, to come down a little bit more. And we use five as our connector finger to go across, arrive. You need it to arrive there. And that gets us soft here to keep his, his bigger sound. And then big here. And then it, it's falling down, but not that. A question of how to do that. And here's where I do the diminuendo. This is where I do it. Now you're going to hear 
notes that, that don't sound like they're sustaining because you need the pedal to, to get the thumbs to be equalized in terms of sustaining the six. But if you can't do it like this without the pedal and hear clearly the thread on top and know the way you're choreographing it, then the pedal is only going to undermine which is not there to begin with without the pedal. So this is the analytical practicing. Um, so again, one and two and three and more, a little bit more and two across. Most, it's a destination. Fall down. That's, that's decaying, but you need big here because he has a diminuendo over many notes. you have that then you have to deal with and we, what we dealt with he had some blurring over um, certain measures where you know we had a diminished chord going to a tonic he got a blur because he didn't clear his legato pedal he wasn't legato pedaling in the way it would be clean so that was another issue so that's when you you have the pedal now up. These are your pivot fingers for the legato, and then you play up down pedal. This is a blur, this is fine. And then one pedal fall down and big. voice. I mean, that, that's crucial. So, so you're not even adding the left hand. You're still having very attentive listening for now pedaling across. sensitive to you know the tactile way you're using your arms your wrists and everything else now the left hand he was doing quite well because I mean, this is really not to overshadow what's upstairs even here it's really the forte is up here so if, if uh, we put it together and he actually did separate hands on the left hand. I had him pedal through the left hand, particularly here. Right here. But that got blurry. We decided not to use pedal here. We're going to do that. Now a good pedaling person, could, a person who's very experienced on the pedal, could, could pedal over that dominant, but it's a quick pedal change. The student was having trouble changing pedal at the very end of the three-eighth time, that would be on the third beat. So I said, all right, don't play the pedal on the dominant, but don't do any gaspy kind of snappy notes there. Um, just hug the notes more so that you get this. No one even knew, unless you start thumping away or you withdraw too crisply from those notes. So he was able to, this was a problem right here. So I said, play, lift your foot, now down. I'm purposely make that noise. Delay the, the change of the pedal. That will always help. So again, if I were doing it, I would do uh, a pedal on the, um, the dominant third here, which is the dominant seven. Okay, so we were doing this in very slow tempo. We had numerous repetitions. Finally, he did, um, I mean, we spent a big chunk of the lesson on cleaning up this little 
area of, of, of the stormy section, not even going beyond it. Um, so I told him I would send him a video in the slow-mo, and I'm going to do this now with both hands. So if he can't play it slow, or we can't play it, if I can't play it that slowly and get exactly what I want, there's no way that when you go quicker that it's going to be what you had set your goals for. Now I'm going to do it actually in tempo and, and actually maintain, keep, retain everything I did up to now in my little stepwise practicing. Mm -hmm. 